Biochemical reagents. So now we're going to look at all the different kind of chemical tests that you can do on the different biological molecules that you've learned about. First we start with starch. The test for starch is to add iodine. So you just add a few drops. And when you do that, the solution is normally straw coloured and it goes to blue-black. So that's straw to blue-black in the case of starch. Okay, the next one is the biorette. Biorette is normally pale blue. So if you were testing a chemical and it wasn't present, the protein wasn't present, then it would stay pale blue. But if protein was present, so you again, you just add a few drops of biorette. Notice the spelling. Then you get a lilac colour. The next one is the ethanol emulsion test. So if we are looking for lipids in a solution, then first of all, we add ethanol, which is an emulsifier, to test solution. And shake. You must shake it up to mix the ethanol with the test solution. Then add water. And shake again. And if it turns cloudy white emulsion, not precipitate, do not use the word precipitate. If it's a cloudy white emulsion, as it looks here, it looks just like milk, then you know that lipid is present. So one of the problems with this test is if you are trying to test milk for lipid, then the positive result, which is a milky white colour, will be exactly the same as what you're starting with with milk. So you can't judge whether milk contains lipids or not using the emulsion test. So that's to add ethanol, shake, add water, shake, get a cloudy white emulsion. Okay, the last test we'll look at is the Benedict's. Benedict's can be used to find reducing sugars and has the longest method of all. So the others were just add a few drops for the starch test, add a few drops for the biorets, add and shake, add and shake for the ethanol, but for, bio, for Benedict's test of a reducing sugar, so a reducing sugar is something like glucose. If we want to see if glucose is present in a solution, first of all we take a sample of our solution and we add in excess Benedict's, which is blue to start. Then we heat it up at 80 degrees centigrade in a thermostatically controlled water bath. Leave it for a few minutes. And then if it forms a brick red precipitate, then you know that glucose was present or reducing sugar was present. And you can see on this scale here that we've got blue, which is the original color of the Benedict's. Then the more precipitate you get, the more red the solution goes. So if there is a little bit of red precipitate, it mixes with the blue colour and you get this greeny colour. The more red precipitate there is, it goes through orange and then to red. So that's for reducing sugar. For a non-reducing sugar, so for example sucrose, which is basically fructose and glucose stuck together, again you start this time by adding your excess Benedict's, you heat it to 8 degrees in a water bath, you leave it for 2 minutes, but it doesn't form a precipitate. You must first of all prove that there's no reducing sugars in there. So by testing for that by using the Benedict's, you prove that there is no reducing sugars. Once you've proved that this Benedict's has stayed blue, so it stays blue, no reducing sugars. Then you repeat the whole process again. But this time what you're going to do is you're going to add acid and boil. And what that will do is that will break that bond. So you will hydrolyze the sucrose, which is your non-reducing sugar, to form sucrose and fructose, glucose and fructose. So that will give you two then reducing sugars. That's what that step is for. Once you have broken the bond, the glycosidic bond, and you've now got your two reducing sugars, 
then you need to continue with a normal Benedict's test. But before you can do that, because the acid will affect Benedict's, you need to neutralise the acid. So then you add alkali to neutralise acid, then add excess Benedict's, and heat to 80 degrees. And if you then get a brick red precipitate, then you know that you started with a non-reducing sugar, you've made it into a reducing sugar, and you've got the test. So you knew then you had sucrose present in the first place. Another thing that you could do instead, if you didn't have the acid and you didn't have the alkali, is you could add an enzyme, say sucrase, to the solution. So you would test first of all sucrose with the Benedict's, it would stay blue because it's a non-reducing sugar, then you would add your sucrase enzyme and then you would carry out the full Benedict's uh, test with this. Again, so you just go from sucrose, add your sucrase, that would give you those two molecules which are reducing sugars, you'd add your Benedict's, you'd heat to 80 degrees, you'd leave for a few minutes and instead of staying blue it would go red because your sucrase had broken down your sucrose into glucose and fructose.